Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested.com here at Comic-Con 2016. Now, a tool on a company I didn't realize would be here, but it totally makes sense. Oculus VR. Brian Sharp, you work with the Oculus Medium Team. You're the project director. Yep. And it makes sense because you're putting this tool, a digital artist tool, into the hands of real artists. Yeah, we just recently started. We've been working with some of the Oculus artists and some external artists, and among them, five artists from DC have been working with it for a couple months now. Now, the last time we saw Oculus Medium was at Oculus Connect 2, when you guys introduced it. I got to use it, and it was an interesting sculpting tool because you can create forms and push in things, uh, but you, it was kind of limited when I last saw it. The primitives you're using, like cubes and spheres. How has Oculus Medium changed in that year since? So we've refined a lot of it. We've redone the user interface at least five more times since then. Uh, it's just always this iterative thing. We've added a few more tools. Honestly, when we got it in the hands of the artists that we've been working with, I was blown away by the quality of the work they were able to do with it. Even with, some of them only use those super simple tools oh. and still manage to pull these really complex shapes out of it. Um, some of them tried all of the other tools and came back and said, I just stick with the basics, right? Like, that's how I get my work done. Right. Now, precision is important. Like, what you're showing off with Oculus Medium is that pinpoint positional tracking that Oculus Touch is going to have. Now, as a developer, how much precision are you, do you want to build into it? Do you want to have the artist scale in more to add more details or allow them really get in? Yeah, I think the, the touch precision is high enough that you could really, I mean, you could do like probably like dentistry or something with it if you really wanted. But uh, uh, it's more about letting people scale things up really helps because then you can really get in and you've got mm -hmm. this like, right, because you know in virtual reality, like it is what it appears to be. It's at that scale. Yeah. So blowing things up just lets you really get in and do a lot of kind of detailed work in there. And then also there's uh, the, the, the shape of the tools, because your hands, you have a very natural pose when you hold the Oculus Touch controllers, but the tools are virtual. So do you build it, are you designing like a pen, a tool, as if your hand is holding that, or is that something floating in front of you, or using laser pointers? How, do, how does that go into consideration when you're building these tools? Yeah, we played around with a bunch of different orientations for the tools and the way we're pointing. We talked about that at OC2, how having it point straight forward felt one way to certain artists and sideways feels right. more like a pen. Everyone holds their pens differently. Yeah, yeah, they do. Uh, this is, uh, I think one of the big things that we did recently was we added stamps, which are instead of just your sphere and your cube, you can you have this whole library of different meshes that you can start with. So actually yesterday, Jack Matthews was sculpting um, and he used stamps, our like anatomy stamps, just pelvis, head, all that to, to kind of block out a figure first and then edit it. Mm. And those, the orientation really matters, right? So we've tried to make sure we get those right. Now, uh, sculpting is also like a, it's a three-dimensional medium. You're typically walking around the object you're working with. Um, are you designing the tool to encourage the artist to go from all directions or also spin their models around? We're really designing, right, uh, we're designing it so that people can work the way they want to work, right? We often demo it standing because there's a dynamism to that. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of artists that are working for long periods of time will sit, you know, in a, in a desk chair and kind of work like that. So that's why we let you manipulate and that's why we let you scale and everything is you can start and, you know, do the thing where you kind of start, make something with respect to the floor or you make something little and you're just kind of holding it in your lap and you blow it up when you need to to do detail work. You can you can wear it however you want. And if you're going to be sculpting for a long time, that's way more comfortable mentally and physically for you just to focus on and then like move the objects around in front of you. Perhaps. Yeah, the kind of dynamic standing demo yeah. is fun and really feels kind of invigorating, but there's a reason that most people do not stand and move around a ton when right. they're just trying to get their work done, right? Now, a lot of DC artists, you know, comics is a 2D medium. This is a 3D format in VR, how are you finding the artists adapt to that? It's been super interesting, right? Like Jack yesterday is a collectible sculptor, so he just got it, yeah. right? I mean, he, he knows how this stuff works. Um, and we've got a range of different artists that are working with it. They all picked it up really fast. Bernard, who just sculpted today, is a colorist and illustrator and whatnot. And he said it really feels like drawing to him, right? Mm. Because you can just sketch really quickly in a way that you can't on a monitor with a 3D tool. 
And so he said it feels exact because he would he just did uh, he went through and did all the Batman cowls from all the different movies, and he was like, and I can just add this, and then I can kind of shave the ear away. So it was cool to hear him say that, right? That as an illustrator, medium feels to him like drawing, but in, in 3D. Do you get feedback from illustrators, artists, sculptors that that inform how you design? the tools and any of those make it into what Oculus Medium currently is? Yeah, a lot of it, you know, they'll send us feedback, but the, the real way we learn from them is just seeing what they're doing, right? So uh, some of the artists from Oculus have been doing a bunch of stuff and you see what they're doing and then you talk to them about, okay, what was hard about that, right? Like, how can we help you? And we have a really nice spread of artists from, you know, anatomists who do figure modeling to kind of more cartoonist style to that. So you get different information from all of them. And then is your hope that the artist can actually use this in some type of production or professional environment? Like, what's the export model for this? Yeah, so our number one goal with Medium is that everyone can use it, right? Like, we never want to do anything where we lose sight of, uh, you know, the ability for just any person to put on a rift and grab touch and just have some fun. Uh, we are already seeing some of the artists up at our Seattle office that made Farlands um, are using Medium for some production work, which is astonishing to me and awesome. Um, I you mean think, digital side, like yeah, on the it. digital side. Got it. Yeah, okay. so they'll model something in Medium, and the thing I say is like Medium really excels at the beginning of the pipeline, right? It's a faster way to get your ideas out of your head and into a model than like it's like ten times faster than anything else I've ever seen. Uh, and so they'll do that. They'll use that as the initial thing. You can export, you know, some standard mesh formats. You can pull it into other tools. You can clean it up. You can paint it. You know, you can do all whatever you want. Um, so it's been really awesome to see them doing that. That's so cool. And then we're going to chat with an artist, get a demo, and then hear from their experience as well. Thank you so much, yeah, Brian. Yeah, of course. It's great to meet you. Yeah, you too. So now I'm joined by Alex Sinclair, who's a DC Comics artist. You've worked on a lot of great projects, Batman, Superman with Jim Lee. You're primarily a colorist, Correct. right? But you also draw and, and dabble draw, in sculpting. Paint, paint. Sculpt. Yep. So when you first got Oculus Medium and the Oculus Touch controllers, what was your first experience like? Um, the first time I put it on, it was, uh, it, was, it was weird, a little overwhelming, kind of just kind of being stuck in an empty room. I think when we first started working on it, the, the environment wasn't there yet. Empty room and then just kind of sculpt. It's you so with the materials. It was just me and the materials. And it was, it was cool because uh, my first question was like, can I sculpt anything? <laughs> and right. sure enough, I just started messing around and, and, and uh, to warm up to it. Um, and it was great. It felt like I was really sitting in a studio sculpting. So you have some experience with it now. Can you walk me through some of these tools you were using and call out, I saw you first just dropped in blocks of clay. Yeah, yeah, and it's kind of like when you sculpt, right? You kind of throw in your massive clay and you start to carve at it. Uh, so uh, without needing an armature, it's really cool because then you just kind of, you just with either spheres or cubes of clay or sculpting material, kind of lay out almost like a sketch. Uh, and then, like with sculpting, you kind of either add clay or you take away from it. And the tool, the shape tool, allows you to, to add or subtract um, in that way. And so that was my first, my first part of, of the sculpt was sketching it out, laying it out, and then um, using the, the add and subtract to get the, a little bit of the detail in. Right, and you're smoothing it out. Yeah. I saw. So then I got the smooth tools uh, to get some of those blocks to look like clay. That's kind of melting into each other since we're using clay face uh, uh, kind of smooth it out a little bit uh, and then I started using inflate and deflate to pull out these kind of lumpy shapes some more so again clay face is probably lends itself real well to to the demo or to this uh, to the program in that it's you know I just needed to make it look like clay you know after the deflating uh, and inflating I, I don't know I think I sculpt like I draw or paint Kind of worked my way around and, and, and spot something that I that looks off, so I go right to it so that I don't forget about it. And so uh, at that point, I'm just kind of detailing stuff out. Uh, and then um, the final part was painting, adding the paint to it. Uh, and and uh, you had a palette, a virtual palette. It was amazing. Yeah, it's you know millions of colors. Uh, you have an eyedropper in case you got you want to select the color that's already in your sculpture, and you got to come back to it. Uh, you, you can eyedropper it or. Uh, you can select the color and you can really affect the opacity or the saturation of the color as well. Uh, so it feels like a lot like painting or airbrushing depending on what, what the specific part of that tool you're using. 
Now, when your tools are an interesting concept because you know sculptors either work with their hands directly on the mass, right. where you like feel the gravity and yeah, the yeah, physics yeah, yeah, yeah. of it, yeah. or you can hold hand tools, scrapers, mm -hmm. and nick things out. Yep. Here it's a virtual tool. So is it? How does it? What's the analog? Is it like well, a laser pointer? And uh, well, you know, I think what with the handheld controllers, it almost bridges that, makes that connection for you. So as I'm pushing a button, it's the equivalent of me pushing in on the sculpture or pulling out on the sculpture or smashing oh. the clay into it. So it, it, I think you get that tactile, uh, I don't know. Uh, the response? Yeah, the... response, the physical uh, tactile uh, feeling by using the, the remotes. And, and, and uh, what's cool about the way the tool is built is, is like you were saying, it's like a laser pinpoint that lets you get into a lot of detail and, and lets you nail it exactly where you want it to put that specific tool or use that specific tool, um, you know, it's like a bullseye. That's where I want it to be. Boom, that's where it happens. I saw your virtual head on the screen and the clay face sculpture in front of you. But for the most part, you were sculpting, because I couldn't see your perspective. Mm -hmm. It was as if it was like a two feet tall sculpture in front of yeah, you. Yeah. Like, have you been experimenting blowing it up so it's massive and you're getting into the well, fun details? One of the reasons I sculpted it small like that is is the time constraint that I had for the demo to work. If I had two hours, I probably would have been working bigger and creating more detail, adding more drips here and there and kind of tucking in shapes more here and there. Which I is something you can't do in the real world. Correct. Correct, yeah, I can't take my sculpture and go, eh, and then sculpt it and then pull it back up. So it's great that you're able to do that. Um, so yeah, it, it's a lot like um, when you draw something and you kind of walk away from it and then you come back at it, that's me doing the same thing, squeezing it to see if anything jumps out that's not supposed to or if the right parts are moving the right way and then zoom back up and do the detail work to it. In your practice, do you find yourself spinning the models around and, yep, yep. and just staring it, you know, at that's it? That's the thing, you're just not drawing, you're sculpting, so you got to work your way around the whole piece, make sure that it works and looks good as a whole. Silhouettes and forms. That's right. Very Everything. cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Alex, for chatting with me.